Avatar The Last Airbender was arguably one of the greatest series that Nickelodeon has ever produced. It had depth. It had political satire and reflection. It gave way for its audience to be introspective as it relates to their humanity and understanding of human suffering. With it recently being picked up by Netflix, its recent resurgence in popular culture made way for new discussion about the show, new questions, and new theories. In this episode of Unpacking Media on Kyler Time, we will be unpacking how Avatar, the last airbender series, would have been different if Zuko succeeded in capturing Aang in the very first episodes. By that, I mean once Zuko invaded the South Pole where Katara and Sokka had discovered Aang frozen in a block of ice, once Zuko traded Aang's capture for the safety of the South Pole, what would have happened if Aang's escape wasn't successful? or perhaps wasn't even attempted. The first two episodes would have played out virtually identical to how they did in canon. Katara and Sokka would discover and free Aang from the iceberg. After accidentally setting off the booby trap on the Fire Navy ship and alerting Prince Zuko to their location, Aang would be banished from the Southern Water Tribe by Sokka. After Zuko defeats Sokka in battle, Aang will return just as he did in canon. Hey Katara! Hey Sokka! Hi, Aang. He tries to fight Zuko but quickly realizes that the members of the Southern Water Tribe can easily be turned into casualties of war. So he promises Zuko his surrender as long as Zuko agrees to leave the Southern Water Tribe alone. Zuko agrees and Aang is bound and taken away only leaving Katara with these last words. Take care of Appa for me until I get back. Here's where things change. In order for us to fully analyze how Avatar would be different if Zuko successfully returns Aang to the Fire Nation as his captive, we have to reimagine the events moving forward. Specifically, what would keep Aang from escaping captivity like he did in the show? There are plenty of things Zuko could have done to keep Aang from escaping if the variables were even slightly different. For example, if Zuko had a chi blocker at his disposal, he could have immediately taken Aang's bending away and routinely had his chi blocked during the voyage from the Southern Water Tribe to the Fire Nation capital. Alternatively, the right combination of herbs could have created an elixir that drugged and knocked Aang out. Aang could have been drugged regularly to render him incapacitated until Zuko successfully delivered him to the Fire Lord. Both of these would have been effective enough strategies to keep Aang from escaping. However, for Zuko, this would only solve half of his problem. What Zuko didn't know is Aang left his 10-ton flying bison back at the Southern Water Tribe with Katara and Sokka who are already mounting a plan to rescue him. Nevertheless, he only has one option that would guarantee his ability to bring Aang back to the Fire Nation without interference. After making a deal with Aang to leave the Southern Water Tribe alone in exchange for his surrender, Zuko would have to order a team of Fire Nation soldiers to stand by and occupy the Southern Water Tribe. He would need to give orders to his men to burn everything and everyone to the ground if Aang escaped his custody. With that threat, Aang wouldn't dare attempt to escape Zuko's custody and fear that Zuko's soldiers would kill Katara, Sokka, and everyone that they loved. Of course, this occupying force wouldn't work to keep Katara and Sokka contained for long. Sooner or later, they will find a way to escape occupation and reach Appa, unless Appa crushed the occupation first. Then, they will be on the chase after Aang. I know what you're thinking. Now that Sokka and Katara are free, it's only a matter of time before they track down Zuko, rescue Aang, and we're back in canon. Not exactly though. If we study the map of Avatar The Last Airbender, the Fire Nation is very close to the Southern Water Tribe. Just north of the Southern Water Tribe is the Southern Air Temple. The likely route Zuko would take is to travel the coast of the island surrounding the Southern Air Temple and then cross the ocean in the direction of Yan Ra's village. Yan Ra being the man who murdered Katara and Sokka's mother, who in canon, Katara and Zuko confronted in the episode The Southern Raider. And no matter how determined Katara would be to rescue Aang, Sokka would never let her fly into Fire Nation waters. More than likely, he would convince her to continue to the Northern Water Tribe. He would later tell her, Katara, I know you want to save your boyfriend. He's not my- Whatever. But flying into the Fire Nation is only going to get us killed. 
Let's go to the Northern Water Tribe to find you a master. Once you find a master, we can figure out a plan to save Aang. So, on they would travel to the Northern Water Tribe, while Zuko and Iroh sailed the coast of the Fire Nation to reach the Fire Nation capital. On the voyage to the Fire Nation capital, Zuko's ship would send a messenger hawk to the royal palace, requesting permission to return home. Ira would insist that Zuko include in his correspondence that Aang is not aware of the airbender genocide. Remember, Aang did not have the opportunity to visit the Southern Air Temple yet. In canon, as Aang is taking Katara and Sokka to visit his home, he is adamant that the Fire Nation did not have the capability to reach the mountaintop temple. The inclusion of this information in the correspondence will be necessary to ensure Zuko's protection. Iroh, knowing his brother, would know that if Ozai thought that Aang knew the truth of the origin of the Hundred Year War, Ozai would never let him touch Fire Nation capital soil. It would be too dangerous, like bringing an enemy nuke to Washington, D.C., Ozai would more than likely insist that Zuko take Aang to a holding facility far away from the Fire Nation capital to be detained. This place would more than likely be the Boiling Rock. However, knowing Ozai's vindictive nature, Iwa would know that there could be a chance that Ozai may order for the Boiling Rock guards to detain Zuko as well. After all, Ozai never expected Zuko to actually find the Avatar. His return being contingent on him finding the Avatar was only a way to make his naive son's banishment that much more agonizing. Iroh forcing Zuko to include this information that Aang was unaware of the airbender genocide, Ozai would insist that Aang be brought to the Fire Nation capital. Iroh knew that with Ozai's cunning and strategic mind, if he had an opportunity to flip the Avatar and make him an ally to the Fire Nation, like Fire Lord Sozin wanted of Avatar Roku, he would take that opportunity. Still yet, once receiving the okay to return to the Fire Nation capital, Ira would have wanted Zuko to be aware that just because he found the Avatar doesn't mean things will go back to normal. He tells Zuko this and Zuko reacts similarly to how he does in Book 2, Episode 1, The Avatar State. I think you are exactly what you seem. A lazy, mistrustful, shallow old man who's always been jealous of his brother. Aang would undoubtedly be locked in the brig. Zuko would come down to ridicule and belittle Aang. He wouldn't see Aang as a victim, a defenseless child. He would see him as being an object to his desired goal, returning home and regaining his honor and reclaiming his rightful place as heir to the throne. But there would be one person, one selfless person, who would treat Aang with the honor, integrity, and humanity that he deserved. That person would be, you guessed it, Uncle Iroh. Uncle Ira would travel down to the brig with his teapot and two teacups in hand. He would share cups of tea with Aang. Aang would be reluctant, but only initially. Aang would open up to Ira. He would share with Ira for the very first time he never wanted to be the Avatar, and that his being captured is proof that he is not equipped for the heavy responsibility. Aang would question, was he right to allow Zuko to capture him and return him to the Fire Nation? Or is it another example of him letting the world down, like when he ran away and in his absence the Hundred Year War would ignite? Uncle Iroh would answer this question similar to a proverb we've heard once before in canon. I don't know the answer. Sometimes life is like this dark tunnel. You can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel. But if you just keep moving, you will come to a better place. Aang would tell Uncle Iroh that he appreciated his wisdom and that he was nothing like Zuko. Uncle Iroh would tell Aang what he told the crew in the storm. Try to understand. My nephew is a complicated young man. Uncle Iroh would tell Aang that it might not seem like it, but he and Prince Zuko are more alike than they are different. One day, as Iroh made his way towards the brig with his teapot and two teacups in hand, as usual, Zuko will be waiting. He'll knock Iroh's teapot out of his hand and onto the ship's floor. For a wise old man, that was a pretty stupid move. And frustratingly asks him why he's having tea with the Avatar. Iroh tells him that treating the Avatar as he has been is a disgrace. 
The Avatar is single-handedly returning to you your honor, Prince Zuko. But there's no honor in treating anyone who surrendered to save his friends the way you've treated the Avatar. In this moment, Uncle will remind Zuko that he was about Aang's age when he was banished and tell him that because of his banishment, he is just as much a prisoner on this ship as Aang is. Zuko decides to visit Aang. This time, he leaves the condescension at the door. He says to Aang, they will be docking soon. Aang spurts off into a monologue identical to the one in Book 1, Episode 13, The Blue Spirit. You know what the worst part about being born over a hundred years ago is? I miss all the friends I used to hang out with. Before the war started, I used to always visit my friend Kuzan, and he was from the Fire Nation, just like you. If we knew each other back then, do you think we could have been friends too? Zuko will reply coldly, My uncle thinks we're alike, but we're not. He thinks you deserve mercy and compassion, but he's foolish. You deserve nothing. That moment will be pivotal for Aang. In canon, Aang is regularly being endowed with love and support from Sokka and Katara. Here, he is trapped in the darkness of the brig, and day in and day out, he is belittled and humiliated by Zuko. Upon landing on Fire Nation soil, Aang is taken into custody, and Zuko is called to report immediately to his father's chambers. The conversation goes in part how it did in canon. You have been away for a long time. I can see the weight of your travels has changed you. You have redeemed yourself, my son. Welcome home. However, this moment will be altered in a major way. The only reason Ozai was pleasant in canon is because his doubts of Zuko's worthiness were lifted once Azula convinced her father that he had slain the Avatar and he had supported the conquering of Ba Sing Sing. Capturing the Avatar, an Avatar that was only a child and who had not the opportunity to show the Fire Nation how cunning and skilled he actually was, Fire Lord Ozai would more than likely retain similar feelings and disposition for Zuko that he had prior to his banishment. A smaller ceremony than was seen in canon will be held, where the Fire Nation welcome back their prince. Zuko feels pride. However, this moment is short-lived. Hello, brother. As Zuko returns to his quarters, Azula is there waiting. Azula delivers a message from their father. He is to escort Aang to the Southern Air Temple. Zuko has no idea why. And not only that, he was supposed to treat Aang not as a prisoner, but as a passenger on his ship. He goes to Uncle, confused and hurt. He has just returned. And now he was assigned to take Aang back all the way to the southern end of the world where he captured him from? Uncle Iroh reminded him that he has no choice and if the Fire Lord gives him that order, it is his duty to carry it out. What Zuko doesn't know is that Ozai spoke to Aang personally. He preyed on the fact that Aang was ignorant of the events of the Hundred Year War. Ozai reminded Aang that before his hundred years spent frozen in ice, he had many friends in the Fire Nation. Ozai told Aang that he was his friend. Aang didn't believe him. Why would Prince Zuko treat me like a prisoner if we were friends? Ozai told Aang that Zuko was a disgraced prince, a prince with no honor, no respect, and his treatment of Aang should not be a representation of the Fire Nation as a whole. Aang accuses Ozai and his ancestors of starting the Hundred Year War, something Sokka and Katara relayed to him. Ozai tells Aang that he has been misinformed, that the Earth Kingdom started the Hundred Year War, and that the Earth Kingdom was responsible for attacking the Air Nomads. Ozai is not simply just casting blame. The Earth Kingdom is the only nation that is strong enough to keep the Fire Nation from victory, so it is natural that Ozai would try to convince Aang that the Earth Kingdom was the real enemy of peace and harmony. Ozai would undoubtedly make references to Chen the Conqueror to persuade Aang. He would detail how he created so much turmoil in the world that Avatar Kyoshi herself had to step in to intervene, which is all factual and canon. On that day, we split from the mainland. 
Ozai would tell Aang it is his responsibility to join forces with the Fire Nation to stop the tyrannical Earth King from further throwing the world out of balance. Aang is reluctant to believe him, so Ozai ups the ante. Ozai says he would personally see to it that Zuko make amends for his behavior by escorting Aang back home to the Southern Air Temple. Ozai says that if he still believes the stories that Katara and Sokka told him of the Fire Nation, he is free to dismiss Zuko and take the paths he desires. But if once he arrives to the Southern Air Temple, if he believes Ozai's story that the Earth Kingdom is the true enemy, then he asks Aang to return to the Fire Nation capital with Zuko. On the journey to the Southern Air Temple, Zuko is as brutal and resentful towards Aang as he was on the way there, more so even, being that his father treated Aang, the supposed enemy of the Fire Nation, with more honor and respect than his father treated him with. Aang and Zuko would bicker back and forth and even duel on the ship during their journey. Uncle would work tirelessly to keep them calm with each other. Aang's separation from Appa and his constantly being around Zuko's damning negative presence would be a huge weight on him. He would grow more and more into the Aang that we started to see in the desert. During one argument, after being verbally brutalized by Zuko, Aang would say in a fit of anger what Zuko's father said of him. He would tell Zuko that his father said he was a disgraced prince, a prince with no honor, no respect. Zuko is taken aback by his words. He is angry, but more so angry because he knows Aang isn't lying and that his father actually said this about him. Upon arrival to the Southern Air Temple, Aang is elated, just as giddy and joyful as we saw him in canon. He finds the statue of Roku and discovers Momo in the tombs. However, when he chases Momo through the tattered claws in the far corner of the temple, he finds the bleached skeleton of Monk Gyatso. Both Zuko and Iroh are shocked. All of the Fire Nation lifeless bodies that we saw in Book 1, Episode 3 were redressed in Earth Kingdom soldier rags. Ozai has sent men to switch out the firebender uniforms for Earth Kingdom uniforms to convince Aang that it was actually the Earth Kingdom who murdered the Air Nomads, that it was the Earth Kingdom soldiers who murdered Monk Gyatso. We see Aang go into the Avatar state for the very first time. He nearly blows Zuko and Iroh off the side of the cliff. This time, Uncle Iroh talks him down out of the Avatar state. Aang cries to Uncle and says it's his fault that the airbenders are all dead. Uncle consoles him as Aang speaks those faithful words. I really am the last airbender. Zuko is in shock that his father would go through such lengths to deceive Aang. He realized that Ozai sent him and Iroh because they were expendable. If they were killed by Aang in his rage, they would have just been casualties of war in Ozai's eyes, a very small means to a much greater end. Zuko and Iroh set off to return Aang to the Fire Nation capital upon his own request. On the voyage back, Aang is terribly broken by the realization that his people have been wiped out. He feels like a failure. In his mind, he ran away and allowed for the Air Nomads to be wiped out by the Earth Kingdom forces. Zuko joins Aang in his quarters. This moment would be crucial for Zuko and Aang's relationship. This would be the first time Zuko would truly see Aang as a person and not just an object. Aang is irritated at Zuko and complains that he has no idea what he's experiencing. Zuko shares with him that the war resulted in him losing his cousin, Lu Ten, Uncle Iroh's son. Leaves from the vine falling so slow like fragile tiny shells drifting in the foam. Aang was surprised to hear that Iroh lost a child, and during the war against the Earth Kingdom, no less. Here, in this moment, Zuko would tell him that he knew the cost of war, and that if not for the war, and for the greed, and for power, he wouldn't have lost his mother. Aang would have been visually shocked by how the war managed to capture casualties in the royal family. 
Aang would have asked if Earth Kingdom soldiers murdered his mother like they murdered Gyatso. At that moment, Zuko would pause in deep contemplation, stand up, and exit the room without another word. This is a trigger warning for all of you loyal Avatar The Last Airbender fans like myself. If you love the Avatar series as much as I do, you're probably going to hate me for what I'm about to say to you next. Zuko and Iroh will return Aang back to the Fire Nation capital. They would escort him to Fire Lord Ozai's chamber. Zuko and Iroh would kneel as Aang approached Ozai's throne. Aang would say in a trembling voice, I saw what they did. I saw what the Earth Kingdom did to my people. To Mount Gyatso. And at that moment, Aang would bow before the Fire Lord and say, Fire Lord Ozai, I pledge my allegiance to you and I pledge my allegiance to the Fire Nation. That can't be it. Where's the rest of it? I know, I know, this is terrible. This is the last thing any Avatar fan will want to hear. I have no doubt that you're doubting my love for the Avatar universe for even saying something like this. But in these circumstances, if Aang was convinced that the Earth Kingdom army killed Gyatso and wiped out all the air nomads, he would align himself with whoever would take them down. Think about it. In canon, he aligned himself with the Earth Kingdom. And to play devil's advocate, the Earth Kingdom was just as brutal as the Fire Nation was. If given the opportunity, Long Fang and his Dai Li agents would have for sure wiped out an entire nation, if that meant guaranteed power for them. Have you met the Dai Li? They're earthbenders, but they have a killer instinct that's so firebender. This all speaks to the complexities of the Avatar universe. Remember, this show isn't about earthbenders versus firebenders. Fire Nation civilian nonbenders hated the Earth Kingdom just as much as the Fire Nation soldiers themselves did. Fire Nation citizens weren't inherently evil, just like Zuko is not inherently evil. It was the nationalism, the totalitarianism, and the propaganda that socialized the population into believing that the Fire Nation's war on the rest of the world was justified. And if Aang was exposed to that, especially at the tender age of 12, he would fall victim to the same twisted ideologies that some of our most beloved characters like Zuko and Uncle Iroh did. But if you think that I'm saying that the story ends here... That Aang would pledge his allegiance to the Fire Lord and the Fire Nation and that he would conquer Ba Sing Se in the name of Fire Lord Ozai? You're dead wrong. To see how the story ends, tune in for part two of Unpacking Media on Kyler Time. What if Zuko captured Aang first episodes? If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe to the On Kinder Time YouTube page and make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at On Kinder Time. Be well, be safe, and stay strapped in.